Welcome to another short video from Preact, and in today's video we're just going to show you Dynamics 365 Sales Accelerator. Um, the Sales Accelerator allows sales managers to set up and define a set of sequences that will allow their sellers to prioritize their work activities on a day-to-day -day basis. This obviously allows them to be more productive at work and allows them to focus on their selling. Let's just take a look. So the first thing we need to do is set it up. Um, the way we do this is you go into the Sales Hub app, we go down to Sales Insight Settings area, and under Global Settings, you can see we have this Sales Accelerator section. And we've got these five elements in here which we're just gonna quickly run through. The first one of these is the setup. So when you're in setup, you just need to make sure that this is turned on and enabled. Um, obviously you can see once it's enabled, you get the little green tick, it says it's enabled, and you can disable it from here as well. The second thing you can do is set up who has access to these workspaces. Um, so you can click on the configure option here. You can specify which security roles and inherit these workspaces, or you could just say all security roles. It's as simple as you click into here and then you can specify the roles that you need. You can add some sample data if you just wanna test it in say sandbox or somewhere, and you don't wanna use your own data. And then the last thing, obviously, is you can configure, you know, where these sequences and things are going to appear on the forms. So everything that we're looking at in the sales accelerator is, is geared up for these four record types. So it's accounts, contacts, leads and opportunities. So you can see by default, this will appear on all of the sales insights forms. You can change this and pick a different form. But if you do, you need to go into the Power Apps Studio Designer and, and basically add this component to the form. Um, once you've done that, the next thing over here we can look at is the segments. So segments. Um, segments are, well, you imagine a group of records. Um, we can define a different condition for each segment. And then after each segment is activated, any records that satisfy these conditions automatically get the members added to these segments. And these segments can be linked to sequences which we'll come on to. So you can see I've just got a few examples here. We've got all income and opportunities, this is activated. All income and leads, again, this is activated. I've got all inquiries that come from our website. I've added in some opportunities that get created by our finance team. Big deal opportunities, so looking at the description here, opportunities where the value is greater than 500,000. Um, key accounts, this one's inactive. So if we click into this, I can just show you. It's very similar to how we build the advanced finds. All you're doing is specifying when you create this, what table is it accounts, contacts, leads, or opportunities. Um, and then obviously in here, you're just specifying the criteria. So because I've said this is against the accounts table, it's as simple as going through and adding these rows and building out your criteria of all of your field data. Um, just delete that off. So you can see all I've done is the order value equals six months. It's great. In the last six months, it's greater than 250,000. So we've got a roll up field on our account that's rolling up all the order values, and if it's over that value, then of course, a member will get added to this segment. And if you click on details at any one time, once you've got some data in here, you'll see the segment members in here as well. Once you've built your, your criteria out, you can come in here and activate it from here and view the segment in here, or when you're on it, you've got the activate option in the top right-hand corner. So segments are just a way of grouping your data for these records in one area. Next thing on the list is the team settings. So in the team settings, you can see here, you can see all your users. You know, if I just collapse these, you can see what it is, it's done per team. So I've got two members in the finance team. If I expand that, I can see it's Fiona and Jack. Two in the sales team, Chris and Tom. Um, each one of these is obviously a seller and we can define their access and manage their sort of attributes, you know. So for example, Fiona here, you can see if I click on, uh, where are we, Fiona? You can see here, currently she's in assigned 47 records. She's got a capacity of 100. And you can see here, simple as just ticking her value, clicking set capacity. I could increase this and say, okay, you've got the capacity to have 150 records assigned to you. I can override those settings, and now she's got 150. Obviously the 47 come from the attributes that we've applied. So we set up these attributes just by clicking manage attributes. Um, you can see, you can set up new seller attributes. So I've just got two in here that are saying, you know, um, 
look at the field I've got on the leads table called rating, hot, warm and cold. Manage um, leads that are in the qualifying stage, so the sales process flow. It's as simple as clicking new seller attribute. You can see pull data from a field or you can create one manually. Obviously if you do pull data from a field, then you can see if I wanted to say, I don't know, lead source equals uh, word of mouth, web, trade show, and all these other values. We can just give that a name, we can call that lead source, like so, create that seller attribute. What we can then do, you can see here, we've got all those values in here against that. We can add this attribute to one of these sellers. So you can see currently Fiona doesn't have any seller attributes in here. You can see, whereas Mark, obviously, he gets hot leads. So when the rating is hot, Mark will get assigned those and he's got two assigned to him. Fiona hasn't got any at this point, so we can then go apply attributes, add attribute, and what we can then say is that lead source, you can say, okay, so if it comes via a trade show or it comes via a partner, we can apply that. So any of these new leads that come into the system that meet that lead source criteria is criteria as an attribute for this seller, which in this scenario is Fiona. You can now see against Fiona's, you can see here her seller attributes are these. So any of those that meet that criteria, she will then get assigned those records because over here we've got the ability to say, yes, we are assigning her records. We've got that turned on to yes. Whereas you can see all these others are on yes. A few of these others that we saw here is again set to no. So they won't be assigned anything. Um, and then the last thing we can then do is obviously set up the work schedule. So you can see the work schedule here is set up and this is just simply, we go into settings we can say, you know, what are the sellers working hours and do they have any holidays? We set this to on and then you can pull this from your CRM calendar or your Outlook. Obviously, if you're syncing the two, I don't think it really matters too much. But if you if you only got one calendar you're using, you can pick and choose in here which one this will be. Um, that's it. So we can then set up the work schedule. We know what's been assigned and we've got their attributes in there. The last thing we have in here is assignment rules before we move on to the sequences, which is where most of the magic happens. So just show you assignment rules. So assignment rules. Um, I've only got one in here already. You can see this is just automatically gonna distribute my incoming leads and it's activated. So you can see over here, we're monitoring lead monitoring because this is active, we get the little red dot here. Um, assignment rules are only really specific to leads and opportunities. Um, it's a way of dis distributing these leads, you know, whether you use uh, load balancing or we do round robin. Um, in this scenario, you can see just this one here. I've got all incoming leads, regardless of which seller. We're going to do round robin so it's evenly distributed. And that's it. So when a lead comes in, it will just be distributed based on, you know, the criteria that we've already got previously set. Now you can go into this and create additional rules. So you can see here, if I click a new rule and I create a new lead assignment rule, then you can give it you can give it a name. So I might just call this one web leads, for example. I might say instead of all incoming leads, only specify certain leads. At this point in time, you can then pick one of those segments that you've already created. Um, again, you can add a third condition to this if you need to. We might specify that it's specific to just certain sellers or certain teams as well, or any seller. We're not really worried as long as it goes into that segment. And obviously, then down here, distribute leads by you know round robin or you know load balancing um totally up to you how you want to do this um consider work shed work schedule so if you've got those sellers work schedules already previously set up you want to go you know based on their working pattern when it comes in consider that and consider their capacity so obviously you know seller capacity is the maximum amount of leads that they can be assigned they're already near their maximum then please consider that so that would need to be ticked it's as simple as that you click create a rule it's just a way of you distributing all of these leads and opportunities out to these team members. And then the last thing in the, the setup process is the sequences. So the sequences, um, these are really useful um, for you know uh, sellers to basically follow a set of sequences. Um, it helps your sellers overcome inconsistencies with you know training or lack of documentation as they progress through the sales journey. Um, I've got a few in this view. You can see a, a new account sequence, nurture, opportunity and I've just got this lead sequence on which I've actually built out so we just click into this you can use um, some of these sequences as like templates and you can create copies of these as well 
you can see the version history and it's just it's like the others you once you've created it you can activate it from the top right hand corner um, this sequence is just you know um, geared up for I believe a new inquiry coming in so we're just going to say thank you for your inquiry and then we've pulled in an email template um, once that's been sent out we're also going to create a callback for one of the sellers so you can see we've just created a phone call called it callback salesperson to give this person a callback we've then got a wait time conditioning so we're going to wait two days and then we're going to check to see whether this call has been made so the course is now checking for the call status a couple of the things that we can do in here um, is basically i'll just show you here we can see you've got emails automated emails phone calls tasks we can set the wait conditions we can then obviously update different fields in the system and we can have conditions around the different types of field values and if the lead or the opportunity for example is at a certain business process flow stage um, and then obviously we can perform an action off the back of that so it's basically just guiding the seller down a specific sequence on their journey so we've then got this breakout condition to say okay now check to see if this is made if the answer is yes then I'm going to update this field called initial, initial communication has been contacted and if the answer is no go down this journey update the field say non contacted and then maybe arrange a further callback obviously if this person gets contact and they progress through to the next stage we've then gone in and checked to see whether their lead opportunity process flow is still at a specific stage again branching condition just to say if it is do this if not do that so you can hopefully see how you can build these journeys out and, and you're almost guiding the seller down this route or down that route these emails these tasks and these phone calls will get created for us based on the criteria that's set in here and they get added to our workspace which i'll come on to in a second um, these sequences as i showed you before can also be linked to segments so we can actually say anyone that lands in that segment link them to the sequence this is then the route that it's going to take this seller down and obviously when any leads come into that you'll be able to see the connected leads down here as well in the same manner so once we've set up all of these areas you know sequences the segments the assignment rules it all comes together in the workspace i'll just show you that over here so the workspace sits in the sales area and you can see under my work sales accelerator it's in here so if I just expand that you can see it's searching for work items last month this month and you've got the ability to come in here and filter this so what we looked at earlier where you can turn these filters on or off on the workspace so you can add different ones to this simple as just applying a field to say show me all the emails that have been unopened you know any that are overdue or due tomorrow we can search on activity type we can search on the record type. So those those four record types that we've seen. Um, you can sort this as well. Again, you can sort it by due date and a few other things. And the last thing we can do in these, these sort of workspaces as well. So we can refresh this. We can update the settings from here as well. So if we go into the settings area, you can see this will load my individual settings as a seller. You know, I can I can update my availability from here. You can see stay on the same record mark this is complete again these are my personal settings um, and obviously you know what do i want to do when i've done this you know do i want to automatically set the sequence stage to say completed or is it made again these are just personal options that each individual seller can set themselves and the last thing we can do from here is we can do a bulk email so we can click on the bulk email and we can send out an email to a lot of these work items that are in this list hopefully you found the sales accelerator video useful if you have please feel free to get in touch if you've got any other further questions regarding this please like this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget subscribe to the pre youtube channel if you want to see more videos around dynamics 365 or the power platform in the future